Here we go, chat. Level two of Forky's Gauntlet Run. Up against none other than Sharp. Sharp, the uh, Kingslayer on stream. We'll talk about Sharp this time first, even though normally we talk about the challengers first. We'll talk about the defender first. Sharp has played in both Fear 500s that we've done. He hasn't played in any next gen because uh, he's old. He's ancient, something like 19 or 18 years old. Like, goodness, dude. Wait, no, he's in college, so he's probably like 19 or 20. Um, I bet he was 19 when he first started playing with us, and now he's about 20. But guess what, chat? You probably don't care that much about his exact age. Just know that he is a collegiate Rocket League player. Or at least was. Forky, um, on the other side of the field, is one of the most entertaining Rocket League streamers and maybe most viewed. I'm not sure chat uh, answered that last time. I'm not sure if there's anybody who averages more viewers than Forky, a very popular Rocket League streamer for a couple reasons. One, he's got a very interesting personality, a very like character-like uh, macho personality, I would almost say. Nice shot from Forky, holy cow. But I think the bigger reason why he's so, so popular is he is one of the most mechanical players who's just fun to watch. He has such great control of his car. And uh, that's an example right there. A nice ceiling reset to get his first. Is this the LSU Sharp? Yeah, I think uh, Sharp um, moved away from LSU. I think he might have transferred to a different school. So I don't think he plays for LSU anymore. And I kind of forget the details of that. But you, you just reminded me because I was wondering why he didn't play CRL much anymore. And I think it's because he moved schools. Um, that's my understanding. Anyways. He has done really well on stream. The Fear 500 Season 1 champion took down Kinsei. That's probably why you see Only Ray spamming King Kinsei in chat. Was because the only player to ever beat him is in front of us right now. And that is Sharp. Forky going down 3-1. Trying to take down level 2 of the gauntlet. So far, Sharp has not defended any attackers. He has uh, only gotten to play against Rapid and Rapid was able to make it past him. Now he's got another opportunity to stop somebody in Forky. A nice flick and man, he's off to a good start. Up 4-1. A couple good plays immediately off kickoff have gotten him this early lead. Right now, Gino and Chronic both have one defense. Gino is able to stop Triton right away in his tracks. In game number one, beat him three to one, and Chronic was able to stop Rapid not too long ago. Uh, as in yesterday, it's not too long ago. In game five, overtime, just barely, barely, barely was able to stop him. Forky, a nice demo at midfield. He will get a second. Yeah, Chad, uh, if you're if you're joining right now, the internet is currently absolutely scamming us. There's not much we can do about it. It does this to me every once in a while. Uh, the good news is that it usually does come back. It, it doesn't stay down forever. Sharp. Soft flick on the kickoff. Not able to do much. Forky, first time he's had a lot of space in this matchup. Two minutes in. He's going to go for a ground play. A high flick is not online. So even though he connected on the bump with Sharp, it's not really going to matter. And Sharp will be able to go right back the other way. So important to make every one of your attacks, especially air dribble bump type plays, the ball has to be headed into the net. You can't afford to miss either high or wide. Otherwise, it makes you look really, really out of position. Orky booming this one off the back wall. He is trying to keep the speed up. And going for these doubles that we really haven't seen any other ones players go for. But Orky finds a way to make it work. You do not see ones players launching the ball up to the back wall and trying to take a double off of it other than Forky. Everybody else takes the ball to the ground, plays some kind of slow dribble or plays a wall to air dribble. But Forky finds a way to play it at a fast enough pace to make it actually work. That's the reason why he's able to get away with it. He's so, so quick that he's already launched it at the back wall and is starting to make his double touch attempt before the defender can ever even realize what he's going for. Orky off the wall. 
lots of boost to make a play, and that is normally a lethal, lethal Forky. Cannot, though, get the ball back online. These guys have turned into a bit of a stalemate here in the past minute or so. Forky, a nice 50. Sharp is one of the best aerial defenders in the game. If there were ever a uh, Forky stopper, it might just be Sharp. I think Sharp has a great, great matchup with Forky. He is a really smart player and does a really good job of countering the Forky playstyle. That being said, he is getting hyped up a little bit too much. So anytime a caster hypes somebody up, you know, at all, they have to go and make a mistake to make me look stupid. Forky staying aggressive on the kickoff. Able to work his way back in this match. Down only one. Sharp has very little boost. He'll pull off the ball. Grab the midfield to keep Forky starved. Forky almost stuck in this half. Has to stay with the ball. Can't afford to really retreat right away. Because he'll just be left completely out of position. What a great slowdown by Sharp. Sharp realizing that Forky's in a position with very low boost. He has to double jump this save because Sharp can just put it high in the top corner and Forky will not be able to react in time, not without boost. But what does Sharp do instead? A nice backflip to put it behind. So a great play and we expect nothing else from the very, very smart ones player that is Sharp. Forky just a little bit too strong of a chip to himself. He is trying to find a way to squeeze this one in the net, and I think he's done it. A fifth. Forky is doing it just as well as Chronic was. Forky's been taking a lot of these to the ground after the first touch, um, whereas Chronic was taking them all the way straight in the air. But doing a good job of creating a shot out of what was not the best of setups. Forky backflip challenge, completely missed. Look at Sharp, so patient. Realizing that the rush to the boost is not the play, that he'd likely get demoed, wouldn't be able to make a save. A free jump from Sharp, oh my goodness, what a save! This is what I'm talking about, but no, never mind. I take it back, Forky's back in it, 21 seconds, he's tied it up. Sharp the pre-jump, trying to discourage Forky from going for an aerial shot in the first place, but it didn't end up working. And he could not recover in time. The save was not strong enough. Uh, Sharp though, he'll take his lead back and he lets it roll as slow as he possibly can. If this ball ends up hitting the ground a second before it would have gone in the net, just remember that Sharp earned that second right there by not powering the ball straight away. Sharp trying to find a way to grab boost and possession and wasn't able to do so. Forky in control now, coming off the ceiling. He needs to score this one, and it's gonna drop to the ground. Sharp had a nice long clear there. So he will take game number one, but another close one as Forky continues his gauntlet run. Forky versus Sharp. Game number two. Sharp able to secure that last game. A huge lead to start it off. He went up something like 1-6 or 1-5 and uh, Forky almost came all the way back but a couple kickoff goals will secure it Forky uses the ceiling so so well what a nice ceiling reset I mean this is an insane shot this is an insane shot but for anybody who's watched Forky play before you'll realize why I didn't like pop off in excitement that is just a run of the mill play for Forky easy ceiling reset but I haven't really seen anybody use the ceiling um with the ball as much as Forky has. I, you know, I see players reset their car on the ceiling a lot, and I think that's something that lots of players go for. But in general, players try to avoid tapping the ball into the ceiling. It makes it so hard to read. I think the average player can't handle it, but Forky must have practiced or had a lot of different setup plays where he taps the ball from the ceiling to himself because not only does he just feel pretty comfortable with it, it seems like he maybe almost prefers it. He likes to launch the ball really, really hard 
and tap it off the ceiling to set up his next play. Forky, high shot, sharp. Up to save that one, even though it was pretty clearly too high. And look at this, look at this double. Nobody does this, I don't know why. I mean, this is a great position to do it, especially with Sharp low on boost. Launch it high before Sharp can get on the wall and take it away, and then drop the double in. Sharp, can he get this angle on the kickoff? No, worth trying to take it though, but the cost will be Forky with lots of space, boost, and possession. A great breezy, but execute a little bit too far away from the net. Oh my goodness, Sharp, what a shot! Oh, he's not gonna end up scoring it. In fact, he might even get counterattacked, which is a little bit of a bummer, but that shot was so, so nice. Nice save, at least, at least he stayed alive. The way he found, um, I, I spoke a little bit too soon, he will go down 3-1, but the way he found a way to scoop that ball towards the net, as it was almost directly glued to the wall, was pretty insane. And it seemed for a moment that he had made the recovery, but Forky will eventually score. Sharp, a big old clear to the corner. Forky pre-jumping, and Sharp couldn't read the angle. Is Forky gonna score again? No, but had the opportunity, and now Sharp really low on boost. Forky's gonna get another possession. Wow, completely lost it though. Definitely was not trying to roll that ball straight to Sharp, was trying to initiate a bounce dribble, some kind of arcing play instead. Absolutely killed all of its vertical momentum. That was an all-in play by Sharp. Forky just missing the power shot, wow. Unlike him. Sharp, not able to steal the boost, not able to get the demo. This will be an easy walk to the other side of the field for Forky. Tapping this one towards the net. Trying to hover and shadow as close as he can with low boost. Ends up positioning perfectly. The long shot from Sharp. Cannot make it past. Wow, Sharp trying to get a little ch uh, cheeky and take the ball off the back wall. Instead of clearing it across his net, he wanted to start an offensive attack. So he slowed down and set up for taking the bounce off the back wall and that slowdown was the reason why Forky was able to get a demo. Had Sharp just resigned to clearing that across his net, he would still be alive and would not be down four. Forky able to grab his own corner boost. But Sharp barreling down. A possession play from Sharp. Two minutes for him to make up his four goal deficit. But this possession play not working out as nicely as he would have liked. Forky done a good job of keeping the pressure on. And Sharp has had to use up every last bit of his boost just to get anything going. Forky trying to take a cut power shot on net. Great camera work. Looking to see if Sharp was going to grab that midfield boost. What a shot from Forky, is it in? It is! Forky in the zone here in game number two. Great field awareness, realizing Sharp was coming all the way out to midfield for boost, so taking that power shot immediately on net. Might have had an opportunity to score right away on the power shot, but gets the continuation flip reset to finish it off. Sharp has been trying to gain possession on so many occasions this game. And Forky has done a good job, even with low boost. Forcing Sharp to get rid of the ball. Sharp trying to channel his inner Forky there a little bit as he rises to the ceiling, but uh, cannot get back to the ball. Forky, the wave dash kickoff. He is so quick. He's the quickest I've seen out of that wave dash kickoff. I, Ricky, does a really good job of playing quick off the kickoff, these guys are just playing a little bit of chicken. With a minute left to go, I think Sharp 
has kind of agreed that this game is not going to be a win for him. Orky giving us a clip. Burn 8. Not able to get that last flip reset. Is Chronic ready? Uh, no, I don't think so. We'll probably end here and see if we can get Chronic and Dries ready tomorrow for Forky's continued run. That is if uh, Forky were to win. Keep in mind, Sharp is up 1-0. Forky right now is just about to tie the series. It is not over by any means for Sharp. Forky to backwards dribble. Mile has been the best backwards dribbler we've seen on our stream. And I believe Mile and Forky were teammates for a long time. I don't think they're currently teammates. Sharp trying to show his backwards dribble chops. Uh, why is stream so laggy? Sometimes my internet just screws me. Uh, there's, there's nothing else to say about it. Everything that I'm doing on my end is exactly the same as I always do. But uh, my internet just tries to troll me sometimes. Um, hopefully it'll come in and out um, and eventually just be good. Nice power slide dribble by Forky. Will he eventually let it drop? Who knows? There it is, game number two in favor of Forky. As we head to game three. Forky versus Sharp. Game number three. Forky able to take it back in dominating fashion after what was a really close game number one that Sharp was able to take in the final moments. Forky showed his chops in game number two as chat coined a very Forky game, I believe is what I read. But Sharp is going to go up 1-0. Game number three. The most important game in a series, potentially. I always say some silly stat, like I bet 70% or 80% of people who win game three win the series, which is, of course, a very easy stat to say. Nice long shot from Porky. Porky is so comfortable playing fast, and he thought he was going to have to double that there for a second before he realized it was just straight in. Forky, another kickoff goal. So quick to the ball. Sharp thinks he has an opportunity to potentially get in the way of this, or maybe just realizes he has no other choice but to immediately rush. He will not make it in time. 100% of players who win game five win the series. That's true. Yeah, I think I think some, you know a stat like 80% of game three winners is basically in the same vein as just saying 100% of game five winners win laughs in best of seven. That's a good point. Forky, ceiling reset. Flip reset. No goal, though. Oh, nice pre-flip. Wow, that's a good prediction by Sharp. It'll get him a second goal. Great play from Sharp. Forky getting a little overly greedy, and Sharp predicted the fact that Forky had to clear that ball to the right. Pre-flipped into the position and just launched it straight on net. Great play from Sharp. Yeah, chat, the internet is, is screwing me. Um, I, I hope it stops. I, I really do. Sharp. Nice cut. A win to the boost. This is something that was not happening for Gino at all in the Forky Gino series. Forky was finding a way to sneak that midfield boost off kickoff every single time. But even though Sharp didn't seem like he was rushing, he uh, slowly rolled into the boost before Forky. Set himself up for a nice hook shot. Sharp, huge lob. Can he bump Forky? He did, but Forky's still able to get the clear. And the continuation not there. Wow. What a play from both those guys. Sharp, a heads up play to realize he needed to try and snipe Forky early out of the air. And while he definitely almost caused Forky to own goal, he was still able to get that save. This is the way Forky seems to prefer to play. He wants to be rolling around the field at all times. Just flying around, hovering outside 
You know, the challenge area of Sharp. What placement, man. Sharp has had a couple great play shots so far in this game. This angle is tight, and that is perfect. Forky, an outplay on the side wall to try and gain possession. He knew he wasn't going to be able to shoot, but he knew he was playing the long con. Clearing it across the net to make sure he got a chance at a shot attempt. Man, what a setup. Not really a doomsie. He just flies off the wall from that bottom corner. But the pace he plays at can get him lots of goals. The key is to just never make a mistake, which is so, so hard to do playing that fast. Forky flip reset. Not going to connect. A little under three minutes left on the clock. Lots of time. Only a one goal lead for Sharp. Forky always trying to stay on top of the ball. As Sharp tries to clear it away. His side flip is going to miss. High bounce. This is a great position for Forky. He has launched so many shots above the net though. Luckily for him, the defenders have always respected them and went up to save them away. Those are risky when you don't connect with a good part of the net. You are really setting yourself up in a dangerous spot. So far, hasn't been too, too lethal for him. Oh my goodness, cannot watch Sharp's cam right now. Two minutes, lots of space. Forky, he's a creative guy. What's he going to go for? They kind of delayed... Diagonal backwards flip. I cannot believe Sharp let Forky take that back. That ball falling in right in front of Sharp's face for so long. He definitely could have made some kind of challenge on it, but he's playing so calculated. Like I always say, anytime I think somebody's making a mistake, they prove to me why they're the top 100 player and I'm the one watching them. Sharp knows exactly what he's doing. He will chill out, wait on his goal line, make the save, and get the counterattack. Sharp, once again, playing very, very patiently. Has all the boosts in the world, but does not feel the rush to play too fast. Has to use all 100 to get back to this ball, as Forky was going to have an opportunity to tap an easy one. Sharp going to take a trip to steal Forky's boost. And Forky is going to just let him do it. I don't understand. I guess he slowed down when he hit the ball. It seemed like Sharp should have gotten a demo there. Ooh, Forky. That's rough. That is sometimes the way you get punished for a good but not great shot. Forky does need to find a way to score. And he's looked good on those close angle shots so far. This time just a little bit wide. Launches it out to midfield. Thank you, by the way, Frost Esports, for the rate of 21 million. Forky low on boost. Has to pull away from this ball. 37 seconds left. Sharp has no reason to bring this over to Forky. He'll likely play it as slow as he feels he can get away with. A great dribble. Kills it with his wheels. What a shot from Sharp. Playing this dribble ever so slowly. Hovering it right around the crossbar. And then right when he brings it to Forky. Getting those wheels out front to make sure the ball gets completely killed of momentum. And he can roll it in for his seventh. Fake kickoff from Forky. He needs a little bit of magic, and he's decided to get it via the fake kickoff. Ooh, that'd have been nutty. Forky slightly missing, almost able to make it work. Game number three is going to go to Sharp. A very close game so far though. Now both these guys have had somewhat of a dominant performance in one game each. Just that close game one separating them right now.
Forky versus Sharp. Game number four. Sharp looking to get his first defense under his belt. He has yet to be able to stop a challenger. But I say that he's only had one chance. He had a, a game five against Rapid that he wasn't able to win. Sharp never got a chance to go up against Triton because Gino was able to stop him earlier. Forky, nice quick play. A classic Forky goal. A good takeaway and just brings this back on net before Sharp can prepare a save. Just a nice double jump pop. Double jump pop. He doesn't go to LSU anymore. Yeah, I think he moved from a, to a different Louisiana school um, and doesn't play CRL with LSU anymore. No, I think he transferred. Pinch from Forky. Sharp tried to pre-jump it, sealing it in. Wow, what a shot from Forky. He has been going for a few different pitches this game, and it would have been an insane save from Sharp. He actually pre-jumped it directly online with where the ball was. If he had gotten there just a moment sooner, he actually predicted the uh, angle of the pinch perfectly. Forky finally able to connect on one of those insane pinches. One thing he does for sure is he always gets the power out of it. Every time he's gone for it, it's not been about whether or not it had enough power. It's just about getting it perfectly placed. Forky, another outplay. He wants to see a game five. Sharp challenge at midfield. Cannot keep up. Yeah, wow. Sharp is just completely frozen right now. Porky doing a really good job at the beginning of this game. A high pop. Sharp actually has the boost advantage here, but doesn't feel like he has an angle to come to that ball. And wow, what a shot. Porky meeting it at its highest point and sending it right under the crossbar. A lot of credit to him. And he does not lose races to the boost. Working to the air faster than Sharp can free jump it. Sharp tried to pre jump this. Luckily for Sharp, it was such a high aerial, he had time to land back down on the ground, reset back in the net, and eventually make the save. Sharp has done a really good job of recognizing so far when the shot attempt is over and that it has just become a race to the boost. And it is definitely a skill these guys have. You see it from everybody, everybody knows times when to do it but Forky is so fast I think more often than not he's able to punish players with you know quick jumps towards that corner boost after a shot attempt but Sharp has just such good reads on situations he knows right away when the play is over and he needs to start the race to the boost and doing so has secured him a lot of corner boosts in this series so far but right now, midfield plays have really been the difference. Forky has just been kind of getting touches quicker than Sharp expects. And he's trying to play a close physical game here at midfield. And the midfield has been all Forky all the time right now. Sharp needs to get a first possession off kickoff and hold it for a few seconds or, you know, maybe try and push for a minute because right now Forky has had possession this entire game. Nice outplay. Sharp for, wait, no! Forky trying to give it a little extra speed with the musty. Ends up missing. But Sharp is known for playing that free jump style against these aerial 1v1ers. He will get up in the air super, super early. He's going to take a trip out to this midfield boost. No way that was smart, right? Yeah, okay. You know, I give a lot of credit to Sharp and I thought maybe he was going to surprise me here and show me that somehow going for that midfield boost was the right call. But no, even Sharp is mortal. Forky will take a very easy doomsie. Halfway through the game, five goal lead for Forky. Make it a four goal lead. Physical play in the corner. Sharp's gonna come out on top. Back and forth, the series is gone. Not just in games, but in extreme momentum swings. We haven't seen a close one since that game number one. And there's still lots of time left on the clock for Sharp to bring this one back, but 
It definitely seems like it's going in favor of Forky. A nice double jump pop. Sharp cannot get up off the net in time. Just a miss by Forky. Can't see this out of him if he wants to secure this game. It's the only way Sharp's coming back is free goals like this. Got a little bit physical at midfield. Maybe didn't pick up a couple pads like he wanted to. And Sharp able to make him miss. Forky off the sidewall. Early flip reset. Sharp challenging right away. Forky will drop it under. Forky has gotten a read on the way that Sharp is playing defense on these. And while it's not great for the audience because it results in Forky just dropping balls, but to be fair, it maybe looked like he just missed. Or at the very least, he went for a flip reset to block the save as opposed to, you know, secure the shot. But Forky's realized he has to make his play early in the air dribble. That Sharp is gonna come up right away for everything that he does. So he either needs to make the flick or the shot early to get it past him or needs to prep right away for the 50 on that incoming sharp. Double jump and a ninth. Forky running it up here in game number four. Sharp back into his corner and back out to midfield before Forky can do anything with it. Forky realized he wasn't going to win the race for the boost and tried to make a possession play, but lobbed it just a little bit too high, something he couldn't get back to without picking up 100. Man, that is so fast. Whenever Forky hits that right, that wave dash kickoff, watching from the other player's perspective just seems unreal how quickly he's up and right back on the ball. Oh my goodness, Forky. No, don't do it to him. Forky. A nice double flip reset. I think he used his first flip instantly, right once he got to the ball. He just popped it up for himself. I guess it's just a single, right? Yeah, no, that was just a... Wait. No, wait. Did the flip... Did he use a flip and get a flip reset, like, in the process of using it? That was insane. It was like, as, as he used the first flip, he got another one. Forky, feeling comfortable, looking to put on some clips here at the end of game number four. Sharp off the corner, doesn't have ball cam on. Uh, yeah, I think he's just, he's had enough of this game number four. He's ready to go to game five. Forklifts, okay, Seaver. Okay. Well, we are gonna get a game number five in this Forky versus Sharp matchup. We might see a nutty own goal here. Oh no, couldn't get the double. Sharp has dropped his controller. He's had enough. He wants to head to the next. Game number five. Get your game five hypes in the chat if you got them. If you don't got them, you can sub to get them. Or you can redeem them in chat uh, with channel points, I'm pretty sure. Get your game fives in here. Forky versus Sharp. Game five. Sharp trying to put his first defense under his belt and stop Forky here on level two of the gauntlet. Forky trying to continue the run and keep the dream of the $500 prize pool alive. Sharp, very low on boost. This ball flying high. Oh my goodness, the pre-jump. I thought the pre-jump was insane because Forky was going to get a clear and he had no business pretending like that ball was going to come off the wall. But it turns out he was exactly right. He just had a misread. Came off the post in a way he didn't expect. And Forky will get a nice free open net. Uh, that's a nice kickoff win. Haven't really seen any of these from Forky so far. Or really, I mean, this one's got to be a Sharp's fault. Yeah, Sharp delayed kickoff. That's why. You don't get a kickoff like that without your opposition either messing up or trying something very different. 
Looks like Sharp's trying to bring the Wave Dash kickoff in himself. And it really didn't work on that first attempt. But he at least didn't get immediately scored on here on the second. Porky is one of the better Wave Dash kickoffers we've seen. And man, Sharp's just gonna absolutely leave this net wide, wide open. I don't know if he didn't have a read. Yeah, he turned ball cam on, but he had already fully committed to going to that corner. Um, and oh God, we're not sure exactly how we'll handle two players winning. I think, depending on where we're at, uh, I might put another $500 up on the line for the, the rest of the challengers and you know whoever won can get their 500. Uh, but we'll see. I've yet to figure that out. But let's let these uh, challengers make it as far as Daniel first before we get too worried about what's going to happen when so many of them win. Porky up 4-0. This game number five has been all him, all the time. Free jump from Sharp is not enough. Forky could not find a way to get it back online though. Forky out to midfield, trying to fake Sharp. You can tell he slowed it down because he was worried that the immediate power shot might get saved. And then he tried to place it top left corner, but a little bit of overthinking it by Forky is going to result in a free bucket for Sharp. Forky from the ceiling. Sharp, another free jump. And honestly, it might have done a good job at stopping Forky from continuing that shot attempt. This long clear, the flip reset is really just to buy himself some time, but Porky does a really good job of securing his corner boost, which will kill Sharp's attack. But these pre-jumps from Sharp, they look so risky, and he has missed a lot of them. I think the story of game number four was a lot of missed pre-jumps, but one of the things you have to do against a player like Forky is go for those pre-jumps and risk being able to save them away. Forky high in the air, Sharp missed that midfield boost. I think that's the difference there. A great musty from Forky using the ceiling to reset his flip. But I actually think Sharp might have gotten that save if he hadn't power slid just a little bit too early at midfield. Forky crushing it. Forky clutching it up in the most important of games. Now Forky's going to give Sharp the same treatment. Such a fast pre-jump on that aerial setup from Sharp. He was at that ball in no time. But he will die here at midfield. Halfway through the game, Sharp really needs a, a goal or two. And uh, this power shot right at Forky after respawning doesn't seem like that's what's going to get it done. Sharp into the corner. Knows that if he goes for that boost, it will cost him his life. What? He's diving so far to steal this corner. And he's going to give Forky a back corner boost. And the ball in possession on his half. Maybe not the best of trade-offs. Could have settled for letting Forky have his far back corner. Forky, nice flip reset. But that second connection on the ball came just a little bit too late. He needed that to come earlier so he could redirect it before it got to the net. Sharp able to get the save as there was basically nowhere for the ball to go. Minute 45, three goals. Sharp has come back from bigger deficits before, but it is going to take a lot of effort. A high pinch. Forky's going to take his opportunity. Sharp pre-jumps it, and Forky pulls off. He knows that Sharp has been pre-jumping these like crazy. This is a great, great adjustment, and we've seen him do it already. He just jumps up for this ball and instantly lets go of the gas. He knows that Sharp has been reacting immediately every time he's caught off the ground. Sharp is trying to pre-jump the save. And he will expose him for that for a sixth. A minute 25 left to go. Looking more and more bleak for Sharp. As he doesn't win this race at midfield. Forky's got a high ball and he loves these, but not the best first touch. Sharp should have all the time in the world. Never mind, Forky's gonna try and force the issue here, but the long shot will be a third. I think Forky likely should have retreated here. 
Sharp knew it. He, he just sat on the ground and said, listen, Forky, if you're going to jump up like a madman at the ball, I'll sit here and save all my boost for the power shot once you finally can't continue it. Sharp needs these kind of kickoffs going his way. Right now, there is no way he's coming back with a minute left. If Forky gets these first possessions off kickoff, he needs to get as many first possessions as he possibly can. He's got this ball on the side wall. He's really tried to slow the game down and play patient. Forky backwards, not a great position. A long shot opportunity off the wall for Sharp, and you know he's gonna get it. Our man is way too precise. 32 seconds left to go. Hope is still alive for the Sharp believers in chat. A couple good kickoffs could go a long way right now. What is Sharp gonna do? Forky gonna miss that kickoff. You could tell the way he set it up, but he's gonna bump into Sharp. But Sharp's gonna bump him back. 27 seconds left. Can Forky get the power? E oh, sorry, Sharp can he get the power? Yes, Forky can't get there. 24 seconds left to go. A one goal game. Every single series has been so insane. Both Sharp's games going to game five. Now he's within one with 24 seconds left to go. What kind of kickoff are we going to see from him? Run to the middle. Forky sticks with his wave dash kickoff. It's earned him so many possessions. He pre-jumps this and he doesn't get there. He tried to outplay Sharp. He thought Sharp was being over aggressive, but he wasn't able to touch the ball. Sharp, though, couldn't capitalize. Forky is going to take a long shot. Sharp can save it. He keeps it just barely out. He should have a lot of boost. He won out the boost battle, but Forky is going to give him a lot of space. I'm so surprised he didn't try and stop that play earlier. Sharp going to go air dribble. Bump is he going to get it in? No. Can he keep it alive? It's still high. Sharp. An opportunity, no doubt. Flip reset from Sharp. No! It would have been so legendary. But the ball will hit the ground, and Forky's gauntlet run will continue as he takes it in game number five.